A Supreme Court of India bench led by Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and M.R. Shah today refused to entertain an appeal by the Election Commission of India uh, by which it had sought to restrain the court from reporting oral observations and proceedings of the Madras High Court, wherein uh, the Madras High Court had remarked that uh, Election Commission of India was singularly responsible for the COVID-19 problem in India since it was not able to tackle election rallies and that it should probably be booked on murder charges. Uh, the court has uh, also refused to entertain an appeal against the April 30th order of the Madras High Court, whereby it refused to entertain an application of the poll body seeking to restrain the media from uh, reporting courtroom proceedings. The court in its judgment noted that constitutional bodies would do better than complaining about uh, the press reporting about courtroom proceedings. The court has today also clarified that under Article 19.1a, uh, freedom of press is covered and that freedom also includes freedom to report courtroom proceedings. The court has clarified that such uh, a freedom is important since it holds judiciary accountable. Even though the top court dismissed the appeal filed by the poll body, it has noted that the remarks made by the Madras High Court were indeed inappropriate and harsh. It also went on to observe that there is a certain degree of judicial restraint uh, which needs to be observed uh, from making off the cuff remarks. However, since those remarks and observations that were, were not part of a particular order, there was no question of expungement. The court noted that the internet has revolutionized courtroom proceedings reportage and that uh, real time updates of courtroom proceedings is also a part of the freedom of press as enshrined under Article 19.1a of the Indian Constitution. The court has noted that the access of the courtroom proceedings by the internet is also an extension of the open court facility. Today's Supreme Court resumed hearing its petition whereby the central government was directed to place a plan of action before the top court detailing how 700 metric tons of oxygen would be provided to the national capital. Solicitor General Tushar Mehta yesterday had argued that the demand of Delhi was far lesser than 700 empty. However, the bench of Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and M.R. Shah refused to budge from the earlier order of April 30th saying that 700 metric tons of oxygen has to be provided to the national capital of Delhi. In accordance with yesterday's order till today, the central government had provided a total of 730, that is 30 metric tons excess of the daily allocation limit. However, uh, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta clarified that the 700 metric tons of oxygen will next be able to met on uh, May 10th and in between only 560 metric tons of oxygen could be provided. The central government today made it very clear that to meet the demand of 700 metric tons of oxygen for Delhi, it has to cut short its supply from other states and that if there was any adverse consequences, then the central government will not be answerable for the same. Justice G.Y. Chandrachur noted that the entire proceedings in this case is happening with a long-term impact in foresight. Uh, in essence to say that we are now dealing with the second wave of COVID-19 pandemic and that the third wave of COVID-19 pandemic is also upon us according to the experts and when the third wave of COVID-19 pandemic strikes it will affect mostly the children. Justice Chandrachur observed that when children will require admission in COVID uh, care facilities or hospitals it would be the parents who would be accompanying these children to the COVID care facilities and hence the vaccination of uh, individuals and adults in this age group of uh, parents have to be completed before the third wave dawns upon India. One of the major points argued by Solicitor General Tushar Mehta was the need to have a scientific audit to come uh, to know how much exact quantity of oxygen that is required for the national capital of Delhi. Uh, for this, uh, Solicitor General Tushar Mehta has also sent certain mem member names to the Supreme Court in a sealed cover. However, Delhi government standing council advocate Rahul Mehra had vehemently opposed to any scientific audit unless and until the 700 metric tons of oxygen is met for the national capital of Delhi and that uh, the central government should not be allowed to wriggle out of its responsibility of providing the adequate supply of oxygen to the national capital of Delhi. Advocate Rahul Mehra also stated that the comparisons with Maharashtra was not proper since uh, Maharashtra's uh, ICU beds capacity and the patient capacity was far lesser than that of Delhi. 
In fact, Advocate Mehra went on to have a comparative analysis which showed that how other state governments of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh had demanded for a certain level of oxygen and they were given more than that quantity. However, in comparison to that, uh, Advocate Mehra submitted that when Delhi demanded 700 metric tons of oxygen, uh, they were only provided with 490 metric tons of oxygen and uh, that too not the entire quantity. The Supreme Court will today pass a late evening orders in the case to show how a scientific audit can take place and how the 700 metric tons of oxygen can be supplied to Delhi till Monday uh, since the three-judge special bench of Justice D. Y. Chandrachur, L. Nageshwara Rao and Ravindra Bhatt will resume its hearings then. The central government today moved the Supreme Court against yesterday's Karnataka High Court order wherein the High Court had directed the center to ensure a supply of 1200 metric tons of a daily oxygen supply to the state even though the allocated supply was 970 metric tons. In its appeal uh, before the top court, uh, the central government has argued that if the High Court order is met with, then it will have cascading effects and a total collapse of the system. This uh, appeal was mentioned before a bench of uh, Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and M.R. Shah with the prior permission of Chief Justice of India N. V. Ramana. Justice Chandrachur has sought time to go through the papers in the case and will accordingly issue directions to the registry to list the matter. Well, that's all from Supreme Court today. Do stay tuned with Supreme Court today tomorrow as well. And don't forget to like and share baranbench.com.